The following video will show you on a uh, form four, chapter nine, differentiation. I'm sure that uh, you have look at. I mean, you have seen this dy dx nature. A simple explanation to this symbol would be a dy meaning a small change of y, a ratio of small change of y to a small change of x and it sounds like gradient as indeed it's actually gradient small change of y to small change of x there are books you've seen it will be written in this way small change of y small change of x when you're looking for a gradient last time but for the purpose of this uh, following discussion we will be using dy over dx and the following discussion is limited limited for SPM standard equivalent to junior high school junior high there are three parts or three subsection we're going to discuss today first would be the limit limit of a function and the use of first principle to get it a dy dx by using first principle the second subsection would be by using equation or induction law to get the first derivative d by dx. There's other form to represent d by dx, which is a prime y raised to a prime or a function prime. They are all represents d by dx. Some books it might have possible a dot but the dot represents derivative to time a dot dy dx at the prime is a very common symbol used in SPM last part of our discussion would be on the application how we're going to make use of dy dx in SPM Form a gradient, form a gradient, you form an equation whereby you need to make use of y minus y1 equals to the gradient function m times x minus x1. Okay. Then uh, to determine the turning point, previously in chapter 2 or 3, chapter 3 actually. To be exact, chapter three, we use completing square to determine turning point. Here in this chapter, we'll be using dy dx to determine uh, turning point, and also dy dx is co could be used to get the nature of turning point to see if it's maximum or minimum point, maximum minimum, maximum minimum point. By second derivative, you differentiate another time of y. We will talk about it. And lastly, would be to estimate a function by small changes. Now, without further ado, let's proceed to our first subsection over here, on the right hand side, limit of a function. Suppose you have a graph or The limit of a function for SPM, so I will just stick to SPM since we are going to SPM preparation. Limit for a function, we're going to do with limit. There are four. There are four different variants that could come out in SPM. First would be a limit where you will ask to look for the limit or find the value of a limit when n close to 1. Well, n is could be x, but in this case I would put it to n. It's not limited to only x. I want to put n plus 1 plus 7 maybe. In order to solve this, it's simple because what happens when n value close to 1, when it's very near to 1, maybe 1.0001 
which is very close to 1, what would this value? And therefore, straight away, you'll be able to substitute this value to here. you get 1 over 7, 108, sorry, 108. It's straightforward. Just substitute into the value, you get the answer. Now, there are times, there are times when, oh, this is maybe A, 1A, because uh, we are used of 1, so I use A, B, C. There are times when you can't substitute those numbers into it, you get an undefined, which is the following case. What happened now? My limit of x is close to 0 for equation like, oh, maybe 10 over x. Here, any number divided by x, any number divided by 0 is undefined. This one here is undefined. It's undefined. A zero for the color. A ten over zero is undefined, but a zero over ten is equal to zero. This is something that you need to think about it. To prove that, you simply just construct graph, maybe x and 10 over x of a number from 1, 0 0.00001. You will see the number shrink to a very huge number. I mean, expand actually diverge zero 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 and the number gets smaller closer to one the number is even bigger so that's the reason why you can't divide a number with zero Third instant would be a very special one. Special care has to be taken. Limit says now when x close to three for this equation, x squared minus nine over x minus three. Now if you were to substitute this x into the denominator of x, what happened, this whole term turns out to be 0, and it becomes undefined. So you don't want to substitute it here just yet. But instead, you need to simplify this equation, the whole equation, I mean this whole term. You might want to rewrite it. x close to 3. This is a squared minus b squared, and this is actually the x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. Aha! Uh -huh. So maybe here, square bracket. You will find that this term could be simplified. And therefore, you may be able to substitute this 3 into the equation, and therefore, the answer is what you get, 6. The last part would be the following. Was it the next page? D. What 
happen, you have a limit of x is close to zero. I mean, it's close to infinity, a huge number for five plus three r over two plus maybe five r. Now, this will be a tricky one because a huge number substitute inside you get basically nothing. Huge number divide huge number is huge number. So to do that, what you can do is you are going to divide each term with the highest degree of r. Maybe here is my r, perhaps r. Here is only power one, power one. So power one, r power to the power one is the highest number. So uh, I'll rewrite this. Therefore, my limit of r close to infinity would therefore be five divided by r plus highest number is r. So I'm going to divide with r divided by two over r plus five r over r. Now. I mean here and this number could be uh, cancelled off. Now, as when your r approach to a very huge number, this term will converge to zero, and the same goes with here. And therefore, the answer would be three over five. So this is the first part that involves the use of limit. Next, I'm going to show you on uh, how I'm going to make use of the first principle, the first derivative of a first principle, which includes the use of del x. But to do that, I'm going to pick an example. This is also, uh, we are on the first part, subsection. Uh, first principle. Principle. First principle is different from a first derivative. First principle, we can make use of dx. Small change of x, delta x. Now to do that, there are some methods to do it. Says you are given equation y is equals to five x squared. To get the first derivative by using first principle, first derivative by first principle, all you need to do is you include <coughs> sorry, you include include the small change of x and small change of y into the equation. So what you do now is you y, maybe you, I plus a small change of y will be equals to 5 instead of x squared. <coughs> now I plus a small change of it, maybe x, dx is 0 0.001 to the original number squared. And then you expand it, you will get, oh, okay, I think the number is not right. I mean, the uh, color is not right. Let me uh, correct it. Plus delta x to the original equation. Let me expand it, and then you should eventually get an equation that looks like 5 x squared 2ab it turns out to be 10 plus 2ab times 5 will be 10 x delta x del x times del x will be plus delta x squared and then what I'm going to do is 
you compare the original equation by simultaneous equation with second equation you need to do done away with the y and done away with the x squared and the x squared so you are going to use a second equation subtract with the first equation you get that y here delta y will be equal to 10x delta x plus oops if I'm missing 5 5 delta x squared oh ok now first principle or first derivative involves dy over dx so you bring down the dx or you divide both sides with dx delta x so dy over del x will turn out to be 10x plus 5 delta x then you apply a limit to it you apply limit when delta x when delta x approach 0 dy over dx therefore here would approach to 0 and turns out to be 10x or maybe I will rewrite this since I have space down there of 10x plus 5 del x oops sorry del x therefore what happened is this value would now be close to 0 and therefore you times it with 0 you will get 10x so this is uh, how you should get first derivative by using first principle